are gonna cross the entire Tomogamy region from south to north. This is the largest area of interconnected waterways in the world. talking about getting that online inquiry about the about the lady for the photo shoot yeah yeah you know, they're I mean, probably I, like i would have been interested to find out yeah. just what more like what she the made a this? phone call she's like roger roger we found the new face of wrangler jeans I, you know why it's because i managed to find the one picture i looked good in which was actually a screen grab in the last 40 years of my life and i posted that there you go they're probably like, like we have the next four flyers of mark's work warehouse nailed <laughs> In there, I'm just gonna have like my tripod, axe, saw, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I was looking at these. This is gonna be awesome. Go away. Go away. Everybody, we are here at Matogamacine Lake and me, Xander Budnick, Max Budnick, and Nate Smith and North are ready to head off on an epic adventure. We are gonna cross the entire Tomogamy region from south to north. We got a lot of interesting stuff in front of us, a lot of remote areas to go through where there's very little knowledge. So we're gonna be following the Nastwagon, which are the traditional routes. So these trails and these routes have been used ever since the glaciers left. So they're 8,000 years old. And we're gonna to try to basically poke our way through this wilderness area. There's a few things we don't really understand because the areas are remote and we can't get too much info on them. For example, a large stretch on a sturgeon. It's been a really warm year. Is the river gonna be frozen? solid enough. How close are we going to be able to get to the base of the rapids before we have to uh, you know, get into the bush and bushwhack to a portage trail uh, because you know if the ice is not frozen well it might not be frozen up to the base of those rapids it could force us to have to head into the woods and bushwhack uh, who knows right we're gonna get what we get but first off it seems like a beautiful day there's some a little bit of warm weather in the forecast uh, for tomorrow but today is good we're sitting at a minus 13 it's about 11 30 right now and from here it looks like the traveling conditions are pretty good our biggest uh, concern is gonna be slush out there. Um, if you hit slush, our toboggans are going to get bogged down, our snowshoes are going to get bogged down, and so we're going to try to avoid slush at all costs, but it, we had some cold weather, it firmed up. So the Tomogamy region, for anybody that's not familiar with the Tomogamy region of Northern Ontario, this is the largest area of interconnected waterways in the world. So there is more water which can be, you know, accessed via creeks, rivers, short portage trails, and there's probably more water here than land. So this majority of this route is going to be 
following frozen lakes and rivers. We're gonna have to deal with going up rapids. We're gonna have to deal with bushwhack portages. We're gonna have to winch up uh, cliffs at the base of waterfalls, and it is gonna be some very beautiful country. Got my dog North here. This is only his second winter. He's not quite two yet, but he had a little sled dog practice last winter. Hopefully he remembers how to do things, and I'm super excited to head out with these boys and uh, hopefully crush a successful expedition if all goes well. Go on, go on, go on. Go on. That's a boy. <laughs> Some slush here, eh boys? The good thing about him though is he just doesn't get tired. You know? For the most part. He sleeps like a bit. Yeah. The fact that he's already doing this well is really good. That this is point. all just my way of stalling everyone so I can take a break and suck well, some Well, listen, we got to talk about <laughs> pacing too because I think in the future we'll be a little bit more spread out. Yeah. Uh, but like, I, you know, I kind of burst ahead there. I was kind of like, I had a lot of energy, but that might be the wrong pace. Do you mean, especially for all day? Like, I don't even know for myself. How much are you sweating? A bit. Like, I'm, Yeah, I'm, same I'm, here. I'm sweating you know? like a bit. I have a little more on than you, but... We're still making our way along the Togamacine here and uh, hit a pretty gnarly chunk of slush there, but we powered through it. Feel pretty good, we're feeling pretty good. Overall, not much slush. We had some old skidoo trails to follow for a bit. Now we're in just, uh, you know, what used to probably be slush and uh, uh, hardened up with the cold last week and uh, a little bit wind packed. So, so far so good. Matagamasi is, is a large lake. It's 10 kilometers from where we started to the end. So we need to average about 12.4 kilometers a day. We're thinking, because we've only been walking for about an hour and a half, we've probably done three and a half kilometers. So we're thinking that uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna be on schedule. Hopefully gonna finish or close to it. Uh, you know, sometimes we might walk a little further if we see a good place to camp. Sometimes we might walk a little less far if we just see a good place to camp or if we're just broken, whiny, and exhausted also. So, yeah, so far so good. Um, pulling wise, you know, it's not like the Arctic on some of my trips where the snow's more hard packed. So you're sometimes doing a little more work, but with these freight toboggans we have, they're kind of narrow and they're all spread out and they fit into your snowshoe print. Um, so you kind of break trail for them as you go and they're long so they don't really sink in so you're not snow plowing so much So a good way to travel and uh, the traditional also Way to travel type of toboggan the traditional style um, Toboggan actually comes from Algonquian word Which sounds very similar so That's why we got these I usually use pulks, but uh, figured for this trip I mean, why mess with the tried, trusted, and true way to travel in this country, so. Anyways, feeling pretty good. Beautiful day. Probably gonna get a sunburn though. <laughs> Hitting some bad slush here, real morale buster. Dumping sweat. North doesn't like walking into the slush any more than we do. North, come on! Walking through the slush. North is not used to it. And uh, his feet go in and kind of get wet and he gets scared that he's like breaking through the ice or something. 
it's not really cold out like it would be fine but and then the bottom of this uh, sled keeps getting iced up so I'm gonna have to pull it through this slush here scrape it off for him but there isn't an end in sight to the slush so we're feeling good making good time but now things have taken a, a change for the worst we're only about halfway down the lake too unfortunately We're through the slush up where Xander is. Man, this is real hard, tough going. Looks like Xander made it through the slush. I don't know if I have time to try to scrape this off and get North to agree to pulling in the slush. I'm sure he will be by the end of the trip, but uh, if you can't tell, he's a little unsure, look. He's trying to smell if it's ice or water, so um, I'm going to haul through both sleds through the slush and hopefully we won't have wasted too much time at the end of the day, but that's how it goes. Look at these f***ing beauties out here. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. All our shoes are soaked. We are all have no choice but to go through an absolute slush hellhole. I think we should give me some more weight, but I think you have too much weight. Hey? Maybe. I yeah. Think, did you just see what happened there? No. It's like more, yours weighs more than me and North. Well, I guess mine is more spread out like that, but. I was gonna just hand bomb it. I was just gonna eat the powder. Guys, <laughs> 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 yeah, dude, that's the slush fun. I'm talking about. Yeah. You, you hear me now? Well, you know what? Well, usually, usually it's good. That's These why boots are like, good with slush, but. I, I feel about a little bit wet on the inside right now. Yeah. Yeah, I complain about my baffins often just yeah. because like I'm one sure mine are slush, slush, they fly over, right. but, but I sprayed mine down quite well before this. I should have also just put like shoe goo in the f***ing stitching, but I brought, a, I brought an extra pair of liners and we have hot tents. Yeah, I mean, so. hot dries out really well. Yeah, we're, we're going to live, put it that way, you know? I you know, know there's a crack in them from some other thing. Taking a little water break here through another slush area, um, but beautiful out. Very little wind, if any. Um, I'm feeling that it's, I'm sure it's probably minus 10 or colder, but uh, sure not feeling it right now. Worked up a bit of a sweat because of all the just slogging through slush. And we're trying to make it uh, to the end of this lake today. Probably have like maybe a two and a half kilometers left or something like that. So, anyways, no time like the present, but uh, yeah, bit of uh, started out pretty easy and then got hard and now it's like there's no snowmobile trails but you know can't complain so uh north also is doing great he needed a little encouragement after he got kind of spooked by the slush and you could see him like kind of pawing at it and looking because he, he he i think he thought it was water and he started getting scared so i had to help him through that which is probably fine because it's just too it's really hard to pull through slush and uh, scra scrape all the slush off after you get slushed up the bottom of your toboggan just doesn't want to move and uh I used a little bit of uh, treats to encourage him and now he's like right back into it. But uh, yeah, he definitely doesn't like the slush and neither do we. And it's 4.30 now, so it's getting dark around five. We don't have a ton of time. Uh, beautiful evening, probably, I don't know, probably about minus 15 out, but we saw a nice little bay off to one side and we think we're just gonna tuck in there, be out of the wind. There should be some nice uh, standing dead trees for wood and uh, we'll probably end up just setting up uh, right on the ice. So 
yeah, basically uh, time to make camp. We didn't make it as far as we wanted to make it today, um, but we did make it about just under six kilometers. So uh, we wanted to get to the end of this lake. So, you know, we were ba basically about three clicks off, but we didn't get on the, uh, on the water, on the ice till noon. We hit some slush and stuff. So hopefully we can make that up, but it's better to maybe end a bit early and get up a bit earlier and get to a rhythm like that. So. Anyways, yeah, just gonna haul over there and see if there's a spot to camp. North. Just feeding North uh, first mate pet food here, and uh, this is first mate's um, formula for puppies and endurance dogs. So this is what you feed like dogs that run the Iditarod and the Yukon Quest and stuff like that. So it's the perfect thing to bring when North is out here doing a lot of work all day and uh, gives him the calories that he needs. And it also means that uh, you get more calories for the weight as, and bulk too, so. So uh, we got to camp and uh, you know, started getting at her basically. Tried to get as much done before dark. Tamped the area down, started getting the tent set up. Our tent's a little trickier to set up on the ice and we're setting up right on the ice, sort of in a protected bay. So it's taking a bit of time, but uh, Nate's doing the, uh, the task with that as I've been uh, trying to cut wood. And uh, yeah, stuff's going pretty good, but I think we're all ready for a nice meal. Just fed Nora, so I'm gonna get back onto wood duty. There's uh, the Budnick boys tent. Pretty sweet looking. Max is cutting some wood.
the tent here. Uh, and they got it set up. It's uh, kind of what kind of style tent is this? Like a dome style or something? Looks or like a teepee? dome. It's supposed to be a square. Square side. Yeah. So it's not the easiest to set up without trees to tie off to. But Nate's done it a few times, so he knows how to do it. But we're set up like right on the ice, close to shore. It was a good spot, out of the wind, and uh, a lot of good standing dead, dry firewood around too. So we got the fire going and we're just uh, drying some stuff up. We got some stuff hung up here. And uh, dinner tonight is moose stew. It's the moose stew that Tori and I made a little while back. So I just uh, vacuum sealed a bunch of it. And, um, you know, we made it just, you know, basically cut up some... Uh, uh, onions, carrots, there's leeks in it, some small diced up potatoes and um, just chunks of moose meat and slow cooked it and then added a little uh, flour thickener and so I vacuum sealed it and then I just put the vacuum seal bag into the pot on the stove to slowly melt it so it'll slowly melt in the vacuum seal bag and we can even like boil it get it hot in there and pour it out so we don't we won't even have dishes well we will have our dishes to do but we won't have to clean the pot so all for that Nice little bit of room in here. We got uh, North, he's uh, just down here, snuggled up in a spot with the door still open. Yeah. He's looking out. It might be a little warm in here for him. Nate's being Zolioed, in reach, we'll call it in reach. And uh, Nate's got a nice bit of real estate there, so do I. Fitting all our stuff, my camera case, food, tubs. Trying out some socky poos. Nope, those aren't socky poos, those are gloves. Here's Nate. Nate, you have anything to say? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> a Perfect. Heck of a day. Perfect, yeah, man. I'm gonna get 13 centimeters of snow on Thursday. 13 centimeters? Yep. Oh no, amigo. Oh, I guess that's. Okay, mm. I guess maybe that's not the end of the world. How is it supposed to be windy on Thursday? Uh, let's see here. Not telling me. We're just about to serve up some moose stew. It took a while to thaw. You guys? Yeah, we're on our second uh, burrito. You guys are ahead of us. I'm jealous. Just using my cold steel SRK made with CPM 3V steel. But the best steel you could ask for, if you ask me. Yeah, it's great. Sure. Yep. Yep. Mm. So I made up a big batch. Troy helped me make it. Super easy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And Troy put some like basil in or something. Nice. Most of all, just cut up steak. It's delicious. Seriously. Good. Good. Thank you. I just finished pounding this. And um, get everything set up. I gotta blow up my ground pad, get my sleeping bag out, get all comfy, have a well deserved sleep. So, probably gonna finish this off and start the process of turning in. Tomorrow's another day. Today was, uh, was good. We didn't get on the ice until noon just because there's a drive and we had stops and all that kind of stuff to get here. And it wasn't super fast going, but it wasn't bad. But then we hit, and so we're like, oh, we're doing good. Things are going okay. Um, but we're pulling, our loads are the heaviest at this point too. And then we hit like some pretty nasty slush that was really wet. I got soakers in my boots. Um, so my liner's up dry, drying right now. And um, we had some more slush, which was challenging. It just, the, the time, that you can travel, the speed you can travel is just greatly reduced when you hit slush. So yeah, we we're pretty gassed when we got here, um, but we're about 3K um, from the end of the lake. So I'm super excited to see Wolf Lake again. Have you heard about Wolf Lake, Nate? 
It's pretty famous. It's like Killarney, basically. You know, it's like white quartzite mountains and everything. Super excited about that and to be on Chinaguchi tomorrow. So tomorrow is supposed to be some weird warm weather. So hopefully that doesn't make the slush worse. It probably will though, I don't know. So we're gonna have to just like play it by ear and try not to die out there. Basically, head for a portage trail. It goes up a rapid. 